And now we get on to the reason why Wargaming cannot be considered an esports game in any way, shape, or form. Um, this is a prime example. Um, what you see here is a tier 9 tank destroyer, the T95. It's a pretty interesting tank destroyer. It, it, it's slow, heavily armored, um, unless you know where to aim. But point is, it is slow, heavily armored. And um, here is my problem. This tank is the predecessor to another. So let me just remove all the crud filter out. This tank precedes, it, it follows up after this tank, the T28. Now, the T28 does get a tier 10 gun, okay? So why would a tier 8 tank get a tier 10 gun, yet a tier 9 tank can't have a tier 10 gun? So not only have I gone up a tier, hopefully more competitive players, but I can't even use the gun that I've unlocked previously in the T28. I have to use the stock gun from anywhere between... And again, there are some players out there like Skills, like Quickie Baby, etc., etc., who can probably get the gun unlocked in two to three games. But if you're an average player, it's going to take you anywhere between 20 to 30 games to get the experience, not let alone, not just necessarily the, the credits, but the, 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 the experience required to purchase the tracks so that you can equip that gun. Because that alone proves to me that Wargaming don't have a fucking clue when it comes to understanding how their game even works. There's several things wrong with Wargaming. One of which is their blatant open bias towards the Soviet tech tree. I get it, they are a Russian game. So, you know, you'd think that they'd have a little bit more um, leeway when it comes to tanks of another nation, uh, unless it's some sort of like ru written Russian rule that you have to make Russia, you know, the dog's bollocks and the bee's knees in every fucking video game that you ever own if you live in Russia. For example, take a look at Escape from Tarkov. Again, another game that wants to try and make itself an esports game, but it can't. And again, I'll, I'll get onto that video in another time. But my point is, i am now got to spend what little credits I have saved up to buy equipment to make this tank viable. Granted, I now have the tier 10 gun, so I stand a chance. Please note, I said a chance. Doesn't mean that I will, but I will stand a chance. So, you'll see what I'm talking about. Let's take this thing into battle, shall we? Another key problem. Look at the queue times. On the Russian servers, the European servers, this doesn't happen. And when it does happen, it's usually because of a dip in the player base. Now, bear in mind, I do live in the UK, but this account that I'm playing on is my US account. I do have an EU account. However, that EU account has nothing on it. I created the EU account in... What's what I'm looking for here? Um, basically, on the off chance that I would be ending up back in the UK and I wouldn't ever be able to access my US account. But I can access my US account. And so, here I am. And no, I will not pay Wargaming money to merge my EU and my US account together. I just do not see the point. Now, at this load screen right here, you're seeing one of the fundamental problems. What are you seeing? A bunch of tier 10 tanks, like the Type 5 Heavy, that I couldn't penetrate with my stock gun. Even if he showed me his rear end at a flat 90 degree angle to me, and I was using premium rounds. Okay? Now, my stock ammunition is 2, 248. Again, look at all these abbreviated numbers. This is just going to get players confused. 
okay? By the way, high explosive rounds don't have to penetrate to explode, they explode on contact. So I don't know why you, 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 you've you done that. Oh, and that's another thing. Players who disconnect. Top tier players, like that Panzer Kampfwagen, whatever, you know, disconnecting. Right here is a huge RNG. The actual players themselves are a, one of the biggest amount of RNG that you can think of. Even with a, an equal skilled matchmaker, i.e. you go and say, okay, well, guess what? We'll, we'll implement a skill-based matchmaker like some competitive first-person shooters have done. That's great and all. Some players are going to have a bad day. Eh, it happens. But, and this is the key thing, Wargaming don't have that. They have a so-called ranked battle system, but it's still skewered. You're still going to come across players who are running Smurf accounts. It happens all the time in League of Legends. How many times have you seen a League of Legends player who does YouTube content running a Smurf account or a secondary account because his main account is in gold or diamond or wherever? Now, where'd that shell go, Wargaming? I, I would really like to know where that shell went. I'm sorry, but I would. For some reason, ghost shells are now more of a common thing than anything else. And yet you swore up and down that those don't happen. You also swore up and down that HE uh, will never bounce, yet it does. You swore up and down that certain tanks were going to get fixes, no, uh, fixes, rebalancing, etc., etc., whatever the hell you want to call it. They haven't. In fact, you buffed them and made them even worse. You reluctantly buff any American tank, and I do mean this reluctantly. It's like pulling teeth from a shark, a horny shark at that, just to get you to acknowledge that Just to get you to acknowledge that you may have a balance issue, that there, that there, there may be a problem with one of your your tanks, your your precious, lovely, freaking Soviet tanks. And what do you do? You buff the shit out of the Soviet tanks in every bloody patch, every patch. No, it's, and I mean every patch. It is always, this Soviet tank gets this buff, this Soviet tank gets that buff, this Soviet tank gets that buff. And yet, the patch notes for, say, a an American tank is nerf, 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 nerf. You nerfed the Super Pershing so hard that you offered refunds to the player base in the event of gold. You offered gold, your own so-called currency, back to the players because you nerfed the Super Pershing too fucking hard. How did that get past Q&A? How did that get past player testing? How? Why? Biased. Okay? And you then shove money down players' throats like Quickie Baby, Jingles, Circumflexes, freaking... Pointy ear Jedi, you name it, telling them, make everyone believe that there's no bias when there fucking is. Okay? There's so much biasm in this game that it is not even remotely funny. And yet you will still stand there with a smile on your face, a smirk, trying to con the player base into thinking that there is no bias when there is. What nation has the most tier tens? I'll wait. What nation has the most tier 9s? I'll wait. What nation has the most tier 8s? I'll wait. Here's a hint. They fly a hammer and sickle and have a red flag. I could almost hear the Russian national anthem playing right now, comrade. And yet... No, there's no bias. It's, it's not bias right there, is it? There's no biasism right there, is there? 
Yeah, of course there is. Of course there's biasism right there. So not only do you purposely go out of your way to nerf other tech tree branches so that they progress slower, you streamline the Soviet tech branch so that players can get to tier 8s, 9s and 10s quicker. You add new nations to your tech tree with basically nothing. L look at the Polish tech tree. Why, why did you add them? If they've just got one branch, you shouldn't add them. Okay? You just shouldn't. And you want us to respect you? You want us to, to, to say, yeah, I'm interested in joining an esports team. I'm interested in, in going to Wargaming hat in hand and saying, hey, can you please, can you please sponsor my fucking World of Tanks tournament? No, fuck you. I'm sorry. It's not going to happen. Look, 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 look. You call these tech trees. You call these tech trees. You call... Hello, that's a tech tree. Hello, that's a tech tree. Hello, this is a fucking mistake, but that's a tech tree. I mean, look at the premiums. And this isn't even the ones that are in the shops. This is just the one that I can just go chink and drop 11k gold on. Or 9k gold on. Look at the British. This is barely even a tech tree, in my honest opinion. I know that there's better tanks than this shite out there. Hello, ex-tank driver. But I'm, I'm, I'm not even going to comment on this fucking mistake. I'm sorry, but no. Just just no. Look, look, look at the Czech. Okay? The Czechoslovakians helped the Germans build tanks in World War II. I know for a fact that they have better tanks than what you're that you're showing but you won't let us play them because they'd be better if not on par or better meta than what you're forcing us to play which is these piece of shit soviets and another point an another proof to prove that, that that you are going out of your way to to make us are uh, forcing us to play soviet tanks look at the campaigns are you ready t28 concept heavy tank mission number nine ready Ram an enemy vehicle and kill it. Name a, t a heavy tank in any tech tree, okay, that's worth its salt, that has the speed to ram. I'll wait. Now, you got one in mind? Take out the Russian ones. How many do you have? I'll wait. And how many of you are standing there going, uh, it's okay, don't worry about it, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. Here, I will put up every nation to prove a point. Okay, these are all heavy tanks, and they've all got some things in common with the exception of one. Ready? We'll take a look at its mobility. So we'll take a look at its top speed. 34 kilometers an hour. Yeah, right, being pushed downhill or off a cliff. Okay. <laughs> 35. Yeah, right. Being, again, fictitious. 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 Isn't it amazing how, regardless of the tiers, the American tanks all seem to be stuck at 35 kilometers an hour? It isn't that amazing. It, even though... Different weight ratios, different horsepower, they're all stuck at 35 kilometers. So they're out, aren't they? So let's take a look at our Soviets. Okay, 43 kilometers an hour. Huh, interesting. KV-2, 35. You're telling me that the KV-2 goes the exact same speed as a T-29? As a, it, it goes faster than an M103. It's the exact same speed as a T34. One of these things just doesn't belong here. So we, we, we've made it abundantly clear that America is out. Okay. Let's take a look at the German heavy, shall we? Yeah, 35 seems to be a, a constant number around here, doesn't it? 
Let's take a look at the VKE, shall we? Ooh, 50. Never sees that speed. I have never once gotten this thing to 50 kilometers. That is a bunch of bull. Okay? <laughs> yeah, 20. Yeah, 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 no. So guess what? Germany is now out the fight. Tog 2. Yeah, nah, ain't happening. FE4201A45. <laughs> FE Not happening. Churchill. Not happening. So guess what? Sadly, Britain is now out the fight. Let's... Oh, look! They're all communist tanks that are left. <gasps> Gee, I wonder. Let's take a look at the Churchill 3, maybe. How the fuck does the Churchill 3 go at 28 kilometers, which is faster than the Churchill 7? Hmm. IS-2, maybe, at 37 kilometers? And bear in mind, I don't have the upgraded engine. That's just... That, that's just that engine. That's not a, a fully upgraded engine. Hmm. Starting to see a pattern here. KV3 even. Guess what? Not even got the full upgraded engine at 32 kilometers. Huh. KV85 at a whopping 34 kilometers an hour. Huh. So it seems to me that... Tank mission number, heavy tank mission number eight, to get an American tank destroyer, can only seem to be done by Russian heavies. Huh. Huh. One of these things just doesn't belong here. So, do you think Wargaming's gonna fix that, huh? Do you, Mister? Uh, do you, K, do you, Mister KV85? Do you think they're gonna fix it? No, they're not, are they? No, they're not. Why? Russian biased, comrade. Russian biased, huh? Yes, comrade. Okay, so let me get this straight. So, in order for me to get to progress forward in my heavy tank mission, I'm going to have to take one of you. Yes, comrade. Okay. Hmm. This 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 does not bode well, does it, okay, Mr. KV1S? No, it does not, comrade. Exactly, it does not bode well. So I'm quite literally forced to use a Russian tank. I I get it, Wargaming. You want players to to diverse to buy more tank slots, to buy more crew, things like that. This is where Wargaming makes its money. Okay, it's not. It's not through the sale or procurement of, of tanks, okay? Because these one-off bulk purchases are done and dusted, okay? Once they get their $15, $20, $30, it's done and dusted. That's nothing. It's these. It's the garage slots or garage slots where they make their money. It's the premium time where they make their money. It has nothing to do with them giving you a virtual tank. It has everything to do with the upkeep of said tanks. So, premium ammunition that you can buy with gold. Now, you can buy it with credits, yes. So, they sliced off their baby finger to save their hand. But guess what? All of a sudden, now they're adding these training manuals. See? The, these crew books. That you spend for 2 million gold. Uh, 2 million uh, uh, silver. Credits. But, here's the key thing. However, can you not buy credits now? Can you not exchange credits, see, for gold? Oh. Do you see what I did there? Let, let, let's see how much I can get to... Wow, it will not let me. I'm going to have to do it this way because it will not let me punch a number in because every time I do, it goes nope. 
So are you starting to see where I'm going at? So I'd get about... Okay. One is the equivalent of four. So we can just do 11 to seven times four, pretty much. So let's do that real quick. So 11 to 70 times four equals... So it'd be 4.5 million. No, it's times 400, right? Yeah, so 11 to 70 times. Yeah, 4.5 million is what I would get credits wise. If, if, if I was willing to do that. But we'll, we'll, we'll double check. We'll double check. It's going to take forever. Yeah, 4.4 .4 million. If I dump that. So, are you starting to see where I'm going now, guys? This is why they won't bring balance costs for consumables. This is why they won't do that. Because, again, that's their bread and butter. That's their bread and butter. That's their bread and butter. Like credit cards. Credit cards hate it when you pay off the full balance. Because if you pay off the full balance, the credit card company is no longer in your wallet. They need to be in your wallet in order to make money. So that they can charge you the service fees. Etc, etc. They, they need to be in your wallet. So, let me break down a whole bunch of things. Are you, are you ready, Wargaming? This is, this is why, and I'm sorry I'm going to say this, that this is to, to summarize the entire video up in, in, to, in, in one go. The reason why Wargaming will never be an eSports team. Okay, one, your matchmaker is RNG. Okay, it's not skill based, none of that shite, it is RNG. Your plus two, neg two is too up in the air to be randomized. Even even in an esports team where you know the players are of a certain value, their tanks are of a certain value. In fact, they, they have to lock in their tanks in a in a tournament. Okay. Again, in a tournament. I'm talking about from a player's perspective. This is why I don't watch any wargaming uh, uh, tournaments. I don't. I don't watch any of them. I'm not on their Twitch channel. Nothing. I don't watch a f***ing thing. Because it's all bullshit. During their world tournaments, all you ever see is a whole bunch of Russian lights and a whole bunch of Russian lights. It might as well just be World of Russia at that point. Okay? Players who pick a tank other than the T-54 light during the tournament actually get basically shit on by the commentators. I remember one guy, he tried to load up the French uh, ELC 15, the one that has a ridiculous size clip, whatever it is, I think it's like 13, 15 shots, and then they nerfed it down to like eight shots, and then they nerfed it again down to like four shots. Again, I wonder why it kept getting nerfed. Point is, okay, aim time shell dispersion, average damage per minute, okay? This entire firepower thing you see here, utter bollocks, okay? Average damage per shot, bollocks. I'm sorry, if, if it says I do 400 damage per shot, I should do 400 damage per shot. None of this 300 shit. 400 is the minimum I should do. With a potential maximum of 500. None of this negative shit. Okay? Because remember, Wargaming, you don't believe in negatives, do you? This is why a certain German tank could actually literally put its barrel through its front gun, through its upper mantlet. Remember? Because you fucked up on the gun dispersion angles. Not going to say which one, but A75. <coughs> A75. So you ended up nerfing it. Anyway. 
So that's utter bollocks. Average penetration, utter bollocks. Because look, the moment you highlight something, look at the low, look at the high. Utter bollocks. Rate of fire, utter bollocks. You want to know why? Look at all the things listed right there that can reduce the rate of fire. Utter bollocks. Gun loading, guess what? Utter bollocks. Gun traverse speed, utter bollocks. Depression and elevation. Hmm. I guess technically they're set, but guess what? Again, utter bollocks. Aim time, utter bollocks. Why? Because look at all the items that can be used to reduce the aim time. Not including crew skills. Again, utter bollocks. Dispersion at 100 meters. That's a fucking joke. 0.31? That is a fucking joke. Because how many times have you aimed at a tank, aimed and aimed and aimed and aimed and aimed and waited and waited for that perfect fucking shot? Pull the trigger and you literally watch your shell just go... <laughs> And fall out the sky like someone forgot to put gunpowder behind it. Or go sailing over your fucking target. Where it's not even in the remote postcode of where the fuck you aimed. In fact, some shells have even gone outside your dispersion circle. Which, and I quote, Wargaming apparently fixed. No, you fucking didn't. You didn't fix it for the Americans at least. That's fucking for sure. And again, yes, full disclosure here. I am an allied player. I play my Americans. I play my British. But I also play my Germans, as you can clearly see. It's not like I'm, I'm just ragging on wargaming because they keep shitting on America and England. No, they just keep shitting on every fucking nation other than Russia. This is what I am fucking saying. It is your blatant biasm towards every other fucking tech tree and every other fucking nation. Why do you think the current meta is not a Russian tank? It is the Progetto 46. It's, it's the Prego 46. It's the fucking spaghetti and meatballs tank. Okay. It's not even a Russian tank. And so what's getting a nerf next patch? Oh, that's right. The Progetto 46. Why? Because a Russian tank is not the meta. Why do you think when Quickie Baby, Circon, Skills, Raging Raptor, and a whole bunch of others reviewed the reward tanks for the the stupid freaking battle zone thingy that's going on? What's it called? Not battle zone. It's um, uh, um, front lines. Okay. All of a sudden, everyone's going for oh 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 the American tanky shit, which it is. It's an AE Phase One. Things fucking garbage. It might as well be a French tank, to be honest with you. So, no one's going for the AE Phase 1. They're either going for the Object 777, or they're going for the French tank. So, what happened? Now, all of a sudden, the French tank's going to get an armor nerf, because apparently its upper glacius is too thick. So, the French tank's getting nerfed. The American, tank, American tank's garbage. So, you're forcing us to get the Soviet Object 777. Why don't you just put up that the only tank you're going to get as a reward is the Object 777 at that point? You might as well stick an AK in my back, comrade. And tell me that this is the tank you're going to get, comrade. This, this, and only this. Because that's basically what you're fucking doing, even in your own game. This is why I hate games. And I, I'm sorry, I play a whole slew and different wide range of games. From first-person shooters... To, to RPGs, to MMOs, to, to tanks, to planes, to you, you name it. And the one thing that makes me stop playing a game quicker than shit controls, looking at you, heroes and generals, or horrible graphics, looking at you, heroes and generals, or a limited game engine, again, looking at you, heroes and generals, is the fact that the devs force you to play a specific way and a specific and only your and only their way. Again, looking at you, heroes and generals. Looking at you, wargaming. Looking at you, freaking. Uh, um, there's so many fucking games that do that to you. 
where they don't want the players to be creative, to be diverse. Yet games like Star Trek Online, games like Star Wars, Galaxies, before the servers shut down, rip, they allowed the players to do whatever the fuck they want within a set rules. And those games thrived. The only reason why Sony shut down Star Wars Galaxies is because of pressure from Disney. Everyone knew that. Everyone knew that because Knights of the Old Republic had just gone live and a lot of players wanted to play some more older lore than the original Star Wars. Yet I was a loyal loyal player of Star Wars Galaxies Online for seven whole fucking years non-stop. Seven years of my life dedicated to that game. Mayor of my own city, I might add, for seven years. Even ran elections. Won every single one of them. Why? Because I know how to be a politician. Even thought about running for, for uh, uh, PM here in the UK because of Star Wars Galaxy. But point is, games like Wargaming, like, like World of Tanks, World of Warships, World, uh, 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 World of Warships, World of Tanks, and World of Warplanes, don't even get me started on that fucking turd of a game you force us to play whatever you want us to play like we're your puppets and you're just pulling on our fucking strings on track to this on track to that i think they want me to play the french or i think they want me to play the conqueror or i think they want me to play the soviets some of us don't want to play those countries, those nations, those territories. Why? Because there's still hatred. Okay? I have no fucking French tanks whatsoever in my entire garage. Why? Because I fucking hate the French. Okay? Not a single... Fucking wait! I tell a lie. I've got one French tank. I believe it's the bathtub. Yeah. See how many games it's played? None. No data yet. You want to know why? I've never played it. I'm never gonna play it. I don't want to play it. Is that even remotely clear to you? See, no games played. None. Zip. Zero. Nada. No equipment bought for it. Nothing. Not a fucking thing. Why? Because this tank has been removed from the game. That's why I still keep it. For the haha <laughs> value. That's it. It's the only reason why I keep this piece of shit. The only reason. Hell, I have a Swedish tank with no games played. <laughs> Why? Because it's a premium gift tank. I've kept every single gift tank. Here you go. With the exception uh, of the Tetriarch, because I accidentally, accidentally sold my Tetriarch. And when I tried to revert back by buying it back, it kept giving me an error. So I sent in a ticket, and one of your wargaming stuff. Oh, well, there you go. Another French tank that I've never played. No games. There you go. Tell I've got two two french tanks why because again it's a prototype it, 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 it's a premium round see see never ever ever going to play the french never ever nope why because i hate the fucking french okay i hate the french army i've i've served with some french soldiers you could smell them coming they never showered they never bathed they, they, their weapons are just shit. The FAMAS is a fucking joke. I don't understand why games like Call of Duty made the fucking FAMAS and the Type 95 so fucking overpowered. They're pieces of fucking shit rifles. Okay? It's called a bugle, for fuck's sake. Alright? Even the French say that, they're from, that, that, that the FAMAS, a Japanese-designed rifle, I might add, is a piece of shit. And they want to get rid of it. They want to go to the M4. But no, that's my whole point. That's my whole point. There is still national bias. How many Chinese players who play World of Tanks, if there's any left that haven't died from the certain virus, um, how many Chinese players do you think play Japanese tanks? Why? There's a racial hatred there. It's called the Anglo-Chinese-Japanese War. 
How many Japanese players who play World of Tanks play Chinese tanks, do you think? That's my whole point. There's always going to be racial bias. Do you think do you think there's going to be a Jewish player playing a German tank? Knowing what the Germans did did to their people. I kind of fucking doubt it. Yet here I am, a British player with some very high tier German tanks in my collection. Granted I don't have the Tiger 1 yet, yet. Or the Tiger 2, but I'm on track to them. Yeah. See? Tiger P is the next big thing I'm going to be getting. I still don't see how that gun's an upgrade. I just, I just don't see it. How a 7.5 gun can do, have better av average penetration than a 8.8. But anyway, guys. Yes, you have. Those are just some of the reasons as to why Wargaming, I'm sorry, but World of Tanks is never going to be a successful... I think, I think I saw the words you used, so... A, a, a successful esports team. Or an esports game. So, uh, yeah, guys. Next video, it will be uh, Escape from Tarkov and why it won't be a successful esports team. Until then, guys. Keep shows fine, keep enemies dying. Cover Commander's out. And I'll see you in the next one.